Welcome to Summit's Retail Training. Uh, my name's Trevor, and I'm here to just really try to convey how important retail and selling is to us at Summit. Uh, I really got into this because, I, and you're gonna hear me talk about this, about this retail and selling and interacting with customers is just this really cool experience at Summit because just the full experience that they get at our facilities. And when I, when I was in high school, I worked at a Chick-fil-A and I hated it. I lasted a month. And what I realized really quickly was that my interactions with customers, while I enjoyed them, they were the same. You know, what can I get you to eat? Have a nice day. And it wasn't very fulfilling, you know, like I, a robot can do that. And we're starting to see, you know, like, yeah, you don't need a cashier for everything in places like that. But our interactions and when we're selling at Summit are completely different. You know, every person's different. We get to talk to them and spend time with them and listen to like, you know, what got them into climbing, why they enjoy it. And, you know, we're passionate about climbing and they're here because they're passionate about climbing. Like no customer here comes in upset. You know, if they're upset and they had a bad day, they came here to blow off that steam. They came here to get happy. They didn't come here expecting to have something bad happen to them and have a bad experience and have bad customer service. They came here because it's their fun spot. They love it here. And that's what's really cool about retail is that you, you get that experience with the customer. Um, after working at Chick-fil-A, I knew I just I wasn't going to have jobs like that anymore, that I needed to have interactions and have fun with the customers and be able to relate with them more. Um, I went and started working at a wakeboard shop. Uh, it was a pro shop inside of a boat dealership. Um, and I just immediately fell in love with it. I already loved the sport. I was talking to people that loved the sport and you know, it just, it made my day. I loved going into work and I moved on from there. I went into a ski and snowboard shop, um, and just realized once again, like it just, how much I loved it, how much I loved interacting with the customers, how much I loved sharing my passion for something with somebody else that wanted to have that passion. They wanted to get into it. And I worked there for a few years, um, learned a lot about dealing with customers, talking with customers, how we can make sure that we're giving them everything that they want and everything that we want as well. Um, I took that experience and I went back to the boat dealership that I used to work at and I started running their pro shop there. I started doing the buying. Um, I was able to translate everything that I had learned about the customer experience and what they're looking for into buying and making sure that we had the right gear for them, that we had everything to give them the experience that they wanted after they left our place. Then I tried to go back to school, didn't really work for me. Uh, and then I got out of school, didn't really know what I was gonna do. I started working at Summit. Started working at front desk, worked my way up through assistant manager. Uh, at the time we had retail managers and that was really it. And I saw where we could make this experience better. Um, there really wasn't any unity. We only had two locations at the time. We got in our third location um, and we kind of sat there at three locations for a while. And I realized, you know what? We can make this better. We can make this whole experience just that much more at Summit. And so that's kind of how I got this job. And that's why like, we are so passionate. We've, we've created this environment where customers can come in and get the things that they need and then go and immediately use it and we get to see that. So before I start going off on other tangents that are already gonna be in the video that you're about to watch, uh, let's just go ahead and say thanks, welcome for joining me. Uh, let's get started. So Summit's more than just a climbing gym. It's a yoga studio, it's a fitness facility, and really important to me at least, and to really everybody, should be that we have retail. Uh, retail plays this really pivotal point for Summit because it provides a service to our customers that they're gonna use in our facilities. It, it becomes this really cool transition from somebody that, you know, they've been in here, uh, maybe they've been using day passes for a while or and they're getting a membership and they want to buy a gear package or they've been a member for a little bit and they say you know what i really want to commit to this and what it becomes is this point where they're no longer climbing as a hobby and they start becoming a climber they associate themselves as a climber they 
it's a lifestyle change for them. And it's not just something they do from time to time. It's something that has to be part of what they do every week. And they're coming in here more often. And retail just, it makes it this point where, you know, now they have their own shoes and they're more invested. And what this really does for us is it, it really ingrains that member into our community. Uh, people that have their own gear, they tend to enjoy the experience a lot more. And it just really helps build that community. They enjoy being here. They're going to start bringing their friends, uh, other random people that come in. Uh, they're going to see that, you know, wow, people really enjoy it. Like, I want to be part of this. And those members stay longer. They help, they just, they create a better environment for our gyms. Uh, and those people in a, a deeper community for us even means a better environment for you as an employee. Uh, it's more enjoyable to see people that you see more often and more regularly than just always having to see random faces. So that's really why retail is such an important and integral part of what we do here. So we're a climbing gym, I've already discussed this, and so we sell climbing gear. Uh, and this really creates a really main focus for us. We don't worry about anything else. We 100% focus on what our members are gonna use, which is climbing gear. And it really, having the retail space inside of the climbing gym, it creates this really cool instant feedback that we get that customers can now try on the shoes, they can go and climb on it, or climb with them, and, or the harness, and you get instant feedback from them. You're gonna know if that shoe fits, you're gonna know if it's gonna work for that customer, and they don't have to go to this place, buy the shoe, wait a few days, go to the climbing gym, see if they like it, maybe they don't, maybe they do, they have to go back to the other location, you know, and try something else. They almost know instantly. And what's really cool even for us as employees is that we're gonna know if we did a good job or not. If we didn't do a good job, they're going to let us know almost instantly. And we can fix it and rectify that situation right there. And even more importantly is that you can sell somebody a pair of shoes and maybe you did good, maybe you did bad. And an hour later when you're talking to the next customer, you can instantly be better. And it just creates this really cool feedback loop. And it really it creates accountability to us because we're selling them something that they're going to be using in our facilities and we'll know if we do a good job or a bad job because they're gonna let us know. And that's, that's really why we're able to be so good at it because we have that just instant satisf or that instant like just feedback from the customer. So before the customer even comes in and we start talking to them about gear or they even do orientations or anything like that, we really need to create a space that the customer's gonna wanna walk into and have an interaction with us. And really what that means is that we need to keep the areas clean and we need to keep them stocked and presentable. The climbing gym's always gonna be a losing battle to chalk and dust. We're gonna constantly have to be cleaning. This isn't a one day, one time thing. Uh, you know, we're opening shift, mid shift, closing, always gonna to need to be dusting and cleaning. And you know, the cool thing about a retail space is that it, people are drawn into it. They're already climbing, maybe they take a break and you know, their hands are all chalked up and they come over and they grab a shoe and they're they're interacting with our retail space, but you know, they just got a bunch of chalk on our shoe, which is okay, we don't want to discourage that. We want them to be grabbing the shoes and looking at them and being interested in them, but we also have to make sure that like, we're keeping it clean and presentable. So you know, every now and then, um, when it's slow during the day or you're opening or you're closing, go through, move the shoes around, wipe underneath them, don't just dust around, um, get a cloth, wipe down the shoes, make sure they're clean. And as you're selling stuff, uh, restock it. You know, we try to have as much inventory out here as possible, but we have a very limited space to have a retail area. And so, you know, a lot of stuff, we can only have a few things out at a time. So really important that, you know, whenever we get the chance to constantly be restocking it, it doesn't look good when we just have empty space on the wall. So fill it up as much as you can and just really make the space shine.
So another thing we really want to think about before we even start selling to a customer is that we want to create this background and we really want to just connect with our customers. It's going to make things a lot easier later on and it's going to make the job more enjoyable if you know, the more rapport that we have with the customers, that we're creating these interactions every time we talk to them from the first time that they walk through the door and we do orientations uh, to the point where they want to buy a membership. And even beyond that, we're always going to want to have these interactions. It never stops. And every time you have these interactions with the customer, it just makes future interactions that much easier. It you know, it makes it more fluid. It's not this like awkward moment where, you know, you're trying to get a girl's phone or somebody's phone number uh, to ask them out on a first date and hopefully they say yes. Really what we want to get to, especially by the time that we're selling them gear, is that fourth or fifth date where, you know, we've talked a lot, we've been on a few dates, the banter back and forth is a lot easier. Uh, it just makes things more fluid. It makes it more friendly. Uh, it, we're more personable towards the people. Um, and so that's, that's really what we want. So really emphasizing this idea of creating rapport and background with our customers. You know, this, I'm not just talking about like orientations because really at that point we're just talking to them. We're like, hey, do this, don't do this, but do this. I'm talking about like after the fact, after that, you know, you've seen them climbing. Are you walking over there and talking to them like, hey, how are things going? Are you enjoying your experience here? Is there anything I can help you with? And maybe help them on a climbing move or a route that they're having issues with. Uh, these things are really going to help make them feel more welcome. And it's going to make you more personable to the person and the customer. And when you get to a point where you're talking to them about gear, they're already going to know you and they're going to trust you. And... They're gonna feel more receptive to the ideas and things that you're gonna to try to talk to them about. So really interacting with the customer more than just, you know, orientations and selling and, you know, ingraining yourself with their experience is really gonna be key. So during these interactions that you're having with a customer, um, you know, it's gonna be really important to kind of plant seeds. And this isn't really, being a used car salesman and telling them right off the bat, like, hey, you should buy gear. It's more the idea of making suggestions to them that are gonna make their experience better. Uh, you know, letting them know, like, you're a climber. You've probably been climbing before. You remember, shit, you remember before ever climbing here or working here. And so you understand the idea of that having your own gear and your own shoes that are fitted for you just makes the experience that much better. So that's kind of the angle we want to look at, is that we're not trying to sell them gear. We do, because it makes us money, but we want to make their experience better. That's how you want to look at it, is that we're here to give the customer the best experience possible. And planting seeds is really going to help later on. You know, when they buy a membership, like, let them know about the gear package. Or uh, when a member that you've seen for a while keeps grabbing rental gear, just like ask them, like, hey, have you ever heard about our gear package? And they might say yes, and cool. You know, it just put it back in their mind. But they might say no, and this is gonna give you an opportunity to suggest it, talk about it, and bring it back up to them. And then during these interactions where you're walking around the gym and talking to them, like maybe you see a climber that has their own shoes already, but you know, you, maybe you can tell they're a little too big. It's their first shoe, their skill level's outgrown it. And you can like suggest like, hey, have you ever tried on like a tighter fitting shoe or a more aggressive shoe? It might help you edge a little bit better. These little suggestions are just gonna kind of get their brain jogging and be like, yeah, maybe they're right. Maybe I do need something more to help this experience that I wanna have in here. So there's a lot of space, uh, you know, that the customers can walk around and all of that. And something I kind of like to think about is that we as people, we walk past stuff, we drive past stuff all the time, and we tune stuff out. So whenever a customer walks into a space and they stop and look at something, or they walk into our retail space and they you know, grab something and look at it, that's intentional. You know, our, for the most part, we consider our time very valuable. So for them to grab something and take the time to stop and look at it and touch it, somewhere in their head is rattled around the idea of this thing interests me. 
And so, yeah, people might say that they're just looking, but they're really not. They are considering something. And somewhere in the future, whether it's 10 minutes from now or a month from now, they have this idea of this might be something I want to own one day or I want to have or I want to experience. And so it's really important, you know, not to just say, or not to just disregard a customer, just like, oh, I'm looking. Like, cool, is there any questions I can ask? And, and really just, once again, interact with the customer because them stopping and looking at something is them saying, I want to know about this. So once we've had this, we start this interaction with the customer, uh, especially when it comes to gear, you know, we want to try and avoid that like, oh, I'm just looking interaction. Like whenever I walk into a place, you know, sometimes like an employee will just come at me right away. And my almost immediate reaction to the, uh, what can I help you with? Is, no, 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 I'm just looking, I'm just looking. And inevitably, like I said, I, I took the time to walk in somewhere for a reason. And inevitably, like two minutes later, I'm like looking for that guy. I'm like, wait, 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 actually, I do have a question. Um, so I'm not saying wait. Do go and interact with that customer and let them know that we're there to help them. But don't just initially berate them with like this, like, hey, what can I help you with question? See what they're looking at. See what you know is interesting to them. Maybe they didn't come over here for shoes. Maybe they're looking at this carabiner and you know, don't just ask them like, "What? I can get you that carabiner? You want to buy it?" Like, hey, like, you're looking at carabiners maybe because you're going outside for the first time, you know, or are you needing like a blade device? Uh, there's a reason why they're trying to look at that carabiner, and what your first question really needs to be is figuring out why they're looking at that carabiner or why they're looking at that piece of gear. And, you know, if it's a shoe and they're holding, like, some shoe that they're interested in, just be like, hey, have you ever tried the Origin on? Have you heard about it? Um, and what this does is it doesn't force you out of the conversation. Um, it creates this interaction where you can be like, yeah, let me tell you about the shoe, essentially, without them saying, I don't want to hear about the shoe. Uh, because they do. They want to hear about it. They're touching it. They're grabbing it. Um, and so... We just want to keep that dialogue ongoing with them. So touching on this idea again of customer's time is precious and if they're going to give you the time to let you talk to them, uh, take advantage of that. Even if they're not going to buy that day, um, we really want to impart as much of our knowledge on them as possible. Uh, and this has a lot of benefits. One, it really lets them know that we care about them because if they know they're not buying and they know we know they're not buying, but we're still giving them our time, it tells them that like we value them and we're not just looking at them as a dollar sign. And this is really gonna be key, especially when they're not buying that day because when they are ready to buy, maybe they've been into a few different shops and they've kind of looked around. And when they have that paycheck and they're ready to spend money, their first instinct is going to be who seemed the most knowledgeable and who uh, gave me their time. So we never really want to assume what the customer wants and how this interaction is going to go. You know, we want to go into it always with an open mind. Uh, one of the one of the things that really frustrated me this one time was there was an employee, uh, we were sitting behind the front desk, and we saw this member who I had known for a long time. She'd been there almost since I started climbing or working at Summit, and he knew her as well. He had been there for a long time, and she was looking at a pair of shoes. She was, you know, picked them up off the wall, was looking at them, and I was just kind of like, hey, you want to go help her? And he looked at me point blank. I was like, ah, she's not going to buy anything. I was like, okay, well, I'll go help her. And I went over there and I started talking to her and talking to her about what shoes she had before and, you know, she was looking for something new. And within 10 minutes, I'd sold her a pair of shoes. So it's, it's really important to just never assume what the customer wants. Let them tell us what they want and then we help them from there. So... 
at this point, we've done all this prep work, we've dusted, we've cleaned, we've stocked, we've created this rapport with the customer, we've walked over and found out they're interested in buying something. It's awesome, all this work has paid off. But we don't wanna just go sprinting out the gate and just be like, yeah, this shoe, buy this shoe. Uh, you know, we really wanna make sure that we are getting them what they really want and we, got, we want to ask them some really basic questions. For example, and yeah, some of those things really apply to climbing shoes, but you can kind of reword some of those so that they work for all of the product. And what this is going to tell us is that it's going to kind of dictate how the rest of the conversation is going to go and what we're going to sell them and how we're going to sell it to them. So what we're going to find out about these customers really quickly is by asking some of these questions is that what, where we need to go with the conversation with them. You know, some customers are gonna walk in and say, yeah, this is the shoe I want, and this is the size I want, and that's awesome. These are, these are easy customers to deal with. You know, they've done research, uh, hopefully, and you know, they, they pretty much know what they want. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy. Uh, but take the time, find out, you know, is that the, really the right shoe for them? Are they getting the right size? Fit them, uh, just to make sure that they're not gonna walk away with you know, a little bit of regret and buyer's remorse. Uh, then there's gonna be the customer that it's their first time buying any gear whatsoever. Uh, these customers, we're gonna have to walk through a little bit more. We're gonna have to explain things a little bit deeper to them uh, and have a little bit more conversation. Um, these are some of the best customers because this really might be, other than just like some generic questions and stuff like that, like we're really gonna get to find out how their climbing experience is, how much they're really enjoying it, and you're gonna to get to have this like really cool uh, moment with a customer that you know, you're gonna see them for months at a time and you're gonna remember that you sold them shoes and they're gonna remember that they, you sold them that and it's just this really cool connection point. And then we have our other customers that you know, they're, it's their second and third and that's even cooler because you know, they've, they've been climbing, they love it, they enjoy it, they wanna get better, they want their experience to be better so they want a shoe that's gonna help perform better and yeah, they're, it's gonna be a little bit easier because now they're gonna have a little bit better idea of how the shoe should fit. They're probably gonna be more receptive to the way a climbing shoe fits. Uh, you're not having to talk them into something. And, um, you know. and then there's also the, the, the customer that is probably one of my favorites is that they're buying their fourth or fifth shoe or they, they have a perfectly good pair of shoes and they want a different shoe or they want you know, a different harness. And they're the most psyched customer because like they just, they want everything, they're, they're all about it. They just wanna go all into climbing. And all of these things though, they're gonna dictate the different conversation that you're gonna have with that customer. So now we're at this point where we're, we're ready to actually start selling and actually talking about a specific piece of gear or whatever the customer might be wanting and it's really easy to just get really excited and start suggesting things and start talking about things. Um, but you still really kind of want to figure out a few things. So you, you've, you know, you've narrowed down that are they buying their third pair of shoes or is this their first shoe or is it this, their second harness? Um, ask them some, few, some other questions like, you know, what shoe did you have before? Or um, what size do you wear? What did you like or dislike about that product? And in your head, you haven't really suggested anything yet, but what you're doing is you're starting to narrow down some things for them. And uh, you know, you, you're really creating this idea of what I'm gonna sell to them here in the next few moments. So you really wanna know your inventory before you really even start suggesting something. One of the worst things you can really do is start suggesting a shoe and you know you start talking about you know like yeah this is uh you know blah 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 shoe and it's got this and it'll be really good uh and you kind of they're like yeah let me try that one on okay cool what size are you and then you walk into the back and we don't have their size 
Uh, don't confuse that with we only want to sell what we have. Uh, that's not the case. We always want to make sure we sell the customer what it is uh, they need and what they want. But we try to have a pretty good inventory of stuff here. So there should always be a few shoes that'll work for that customer. Uh, so, you know, like I said, ask those questions that we talked about earlier, narrow it down in your head. Hey, what size are you? And go to the back and bring out a few shoes for them to try on. All right, so we've asked them all these questions. Uh, we know kind of what shoe we're going to sell them. Um, we know what size they are and we walk back into the back and it's amazing. We have every shoe that we carry in their size. And the one thing you really don't want to do is bring out all those shoes. Uh, you're just going to overwhelm the customer. Um, they came to us, they're asking us questions because they want us to help them make a choice. Uh, you asked all these questions earlier to kind of narrow it down for them. So, you know, do that, narrow it down to two or three shoes. Um, two shoes would really be best. Uh, three shoes would be really the max of what you want to bring out and bring them out, explain to them the differences of those shoes, you know, why one might be better or the other, um, you know, realistically, maybe it's three different brands and it's really just more about what all three of those shoes are going to work for them but it's which one's going to fit them better for their shape of foot. Uh, if you bring out nine pairs of shoes, all you're really going to do is overwhelm them. You, they're not going to know what to do. It's too many, th it's too many choices and they're going to leave feeling like they just need to think about it a little bit more. And they came in willing to buy a shoe and now they're leaving, uh, needing to kind of reassess what shoe they want. So narrow it down for them, help them make that choice. One of the worst things we can do, because we've built this relationship with the customer, we've built this trust, we have this rapport, is realizing that the customer asks you a question and you don't know the answer. Don't ever lie about it. Just don't, don't lie, don't wing it, don't make anything up. Just look at the customer and say, you know what, that's an awesome question, I don't know. But let me go find somebody that does. Let me find the answer for you. 